Thanks for checking out our channel here. This is going to be a repair video, hopefully, on a Gallagher M800. Um, this is an old school version. They make a newer black one that came out about seven years ago, but this old one like this and the new one don't share any um, parts in them at all. We can sometimes use the transformer from that model, the hard wire retrofitted into this one in a certain way, and the capacitor, it could be fitted in here, not a big deal there, but a lot of the parts for this model are long gone. I mean, you can't get out, but we can't really get anything for this model except for uh, maybe a capacitor. Uh, everything else is long gone, discontinued. Um, this particular unit on its own is a 1998 model. It's at 98. That's when it was built. That's the year it was built, anyways. Um, they started making this model with this style of you know, orange case, this sticker version style in uh, 1990. Uh, they made an earlier model called a BEV3. B is in boy, E is in Edward, D is in dog, number three. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, B is in boy, E is in Edward, V is in Victor. Uh, BEV3. They are the, basically the same exact unit, except it's got a different sticker on the front. The, the layout, the parts are, are interchangeable between both models. And that model was around from about 84 to 89 somewhere in that range, and then they, in 1990 rolled along, they revamped their, bad, their labeling and styling and what they wanted to brand themselves as with the models, and that's when they came out with this style of M this, B that, S that for solar and everything, B for battery, and they still use the same nomenclature today, so it's about, you know, so this unit is designed off of about a 40-year-old design back in the mid-80s, so um, the note on it says it pulses too fast. So there's a couple things that can cause that. Well, yeah, a couple things. Either the board, main module's got an issue where it's discharging too quickly because either the, the triggering device is going bad or the capacitors on the board are going bad or the main on that part and or this big capacitor here could be really weak. Okay, so we're going to, let's just plug it in and see how fast this thing is pulsing. Um, I've got an ear for it because I've worked on so many of these 800s. I mean, we've, I've worked on hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of these. I mean, hundreds over the last 20 years I've been doing it. And i uh, fixed probably 90% of them. See, a little faster. Should probably be about half that, I don't know. Let's take this um, lights flashing at least. That's a good sign. So it's trying to work. Now we're going to do an open circuit voltage. Re well, I don't care what the voltage. I want to get slowed down first. But we're going to this meter right here will tell us the speed, how often it pulses, how many times per second, how often the shock is on the line. So this is going to be how fast it pulses. And that's going to be the duration of actually how long the shock is on the line. So we're going to pay attention to this. Usually these are about 1.3 seconds plus or minus, but as fast as it's going, it's definitely faster than a second. So we're going to look at that number on the left. Watch that number there. I'm going to go across it here. We're about 0.9 seconds. Fluctuating a little bit, but that's not definitely not 1.7 seconds. But to 0.9 seconds, 0.8 seconds pull. So, yeah, it's about 50% faster than what it needs to be. So, first thing I want to do. Why well, is still pulsing? <laughs> I don't, had, um, had it turned, had the power strip turned off, and it was had like three or four pulses still popping through for whatever reason. The first thing I want to do, I want to check this capacitor. That's the easiest thing to check. Come on. Oh, pulling teeth. So we're going to... This is a uh, 40 microfarad capacitor. So we're going to put a meter on microfarads for capacitance. And there's no polarity to the capacitor. You know there's black and red wires on there. It does not matter which wire goes where when you test it as long as you're on capacitance and we're not getting jet diddly oh 
You're getting about 10. 10 out of 40. That's lost like 90% of its of its energy. And this is probably the original one because it's got that beige color to it. And I think it was originally was white, but as it ages, it kind of turns a beige color. So that might be all that's wrong with it. I mean, these, these pressures here could be a little weak, but we could do a load test on there and see how it maxes out on, on joules. So let me go find a capacitor for it, and I'll be right back. Okay, this is the one I'm going to stick in there. It's a 40 microfarad capacitor. It's, it's uh, not the same, uh, or not the, not the factory one, but I've used them for years with no issues. So we're going to wire that on there, double check. It's brand new, but we'll double check, make sure it reads 40. Gonna go across the top of it here, should be right around 40. Oops. 43.3. My meter, I think, needs to I think it needs to go back to a fluke and get calibrated. Alright, the only thing about this one, it's a little bit bigger around. And this clamp holds the passion place is too small. So I do two things to hold that in place. I use um uh, I find it. Hmm. I use double sided foam between the black part here and the capacitor dust. That keeps it holding there. But then um, I use a, um, a metal cable tie. I ratchet that down. And that really holds it in place. It's pretty much permanent. Oh, there we go. I take some of this 3M pre cut little squares on the back edge there all the way on there, peel it off. And then I'll take this metal zip tie. With this ratcheting tool. Pretty clever looking thing. And we got to put it in a certain way so that way we can get the ratchet on there to cinch it down. Well, it's not really a ratchet, but to cinch it down, which I guess is going to go that way. And stainless steel, so to worry about rusting. A little curve to it so it goes underneath that little flap. It comes back around. And then straighten it back out and then slide it in there. Slide it in a little ways. You got to do it by hand a little way, so that way this thing can grab onto it. Okay. Slide it in like this. Pull it down, and we just give it a few squeezes so that way it's all the way down. And we take this little lever and push it down, and it cuts that little tail off for us. Just cutting this with a pair of snips. Or like uh, like this, like you would a normal zip tie. Barely, I mean, it didn't. It, it had cut it, but I mean, it squeezed pretty hard. It didn't even. It just kind of left a indentation on there, but it wouldn't actually wouldn't actually cut it. It's probably it's, it's got higher tensile strength. All right, let's um let's plug it in here. Now I gotta do it. Okay, this goes to working. Ah, see, a little slower, right where it's supposed to be. Let's uh, do a uh, open circuit voltage, or not voltage, but we'll do an open circuit reading. And now we're going to look at this number again. That's going to run on the speed of the thing, not the kilovolt reading. And we'll see if this reads. Well, it's like point, 0 0.8. Should be like 1.2 to 1.4. Or, I'm oh, sorry, uh, wait, about a second, yeah, 1.1. I was a little off, it isn't that, it isn't that slow. That's right where it's supposed to be. Okay, now let's switch this back over to kilovolts and joules. We're going to do open circuit voltage reading. About 7,000, 6.8, right where it's supposed to be. Now we'll read, put a 500 ohm load on there. Some feedback is sitting on top of the unit. 
right out. Whoa. Let's turn this off and back on. Let's get this off the side a little bit. Get it away from the, I think there's a magnetic field messing with it. Let's go 500 ohm load. Yeah, it's wrong. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Why is it doing that? I don't understand that. What? Oh, because I'm on the wrong one. There we go. Now let's try it again. There we go. 5.1 um, kV at 5.8 joule output. I use about 4.9 to 5. So we're 5.1 right in the ballpark. Let's go to a 200 ohm load. 6.8 joule output at 4,000 volts per stout unit, almost 7 joules. I bet we're going to go past this threshold of what it can handle. Yep, so we're about a 7 joule output unit. That's probably because we've got a, a nice new strong capacitor in there, able to you know do its job. All right, now we're going to do a ground fault test on the thing, which is going to test the integrity of the transformer coil on the, on the secondary side. Um, and unplug it first. I gotta plug another device in to the socket here. And then we'll plug the unit back into that device. And this wire is tied to ground, so I'm gonna take it, hook it to the ground side of the unit. Now what this is gonna do is gonna tell me two things. Either the unit's, either the transformer's good, transformer's bad. And if it, um, cause it's holding the load just fine, showing good voltage and everything. Now, if I do this and the uh, light bulb goes out, there's no load on it, no fence, no ground. We hook up just the ground system only, basically, to it. If the light goes out and it's still clicking and it gets a little louder, possibly, and the transformer's got an internal short in the thing. If it doesn't change anything and it goes clicking like normal, the light's flashing, uh, then the, the transformer's fine. So I'm going to go right here. Yep. Yep, transformer's fine. Okay, and uh, I would guess with all the rust, not rust, yeah, I guess rust or just debris, you know, dust in there or whatever, it's probably original transformer. It's probably a, probably an original unit, honestly, because uh, the board didn't have a, a replacement sticker on there, saying it's been replaced with the new serial number on there, so I think the board's probably original. The uh, this board looks like it's original as well. No sticker on it from a replacement date. Uh, so I think this unit you know, all it needs was a new capacitor and a metal strap to hold it in place. So there you go. So that was a nice easy fix. We'll do some more tests off camera, but other than that, I think we're 99% of the way there. All right. Well, thanks for checking our our video here, and it was a. Uh, if I had to film it, it probably took me about 10 minutes to do it. And we've been done with it, but I had to explain a bunch of stuff. Oh, love these old Gallagher's, man. You can't beat these old things. I think it's 25 years old, 26 years old, and it just needs a capacitor. Ain't that something? All right, until next time, see you guys later on. Have a good rest of your day.